Hi, this is Ziggy Berkeley, and you are listening to yet another awesome podcast on the Four Eyed Radio Network. And hey, when you're done here, if you like James Bond 007, why not check out my podcast, Her Majesty's Secret Podcast, with new episodes dropping every other Monday on The Fern. And if you're really into James Bond, you can enter the Dial a Henchman Contest. Want to know more? Go to HerMajesty'sPod.com slash contest, and you could win something from the James Bond 007 universe. Meanwhile, enjoy the show! Last time on Ranger Command Power Hour. GDF Gate 2014. (laughs) GDF Gate. Or it could be one of those, I'm not the headliner, I'm not going, which we might have seen with the Florida convention that he just backed out of when Austin St. John announced he was going. And um, still hey. tickles me in all the right ways. <laughs> <laughs> that is still my absolute favorite story of the last week. It was great. I sat there. I was like, dude, I shook that hand. I, I, touched, <laughs> I touched that hand. He, um, Your I hand was... touched Gia. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, no, I just... <laughs> Uh, I was just going to say... Wait, are you, saying, are you saying you touched Sierra Hanna by association? Of course. <laughs> Whatever he's touched with that hand, I have now touched. <laughs> Ranger Command after dark. Mm-hmm. Because you're assaulting their Jesus figure. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> That's deep, <It's>... man. <laughs> yeah. That, that took it to a level I wasn't ready for. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Just gonna throw that out there. Yeah. You know what? I'll say this right now. I have created the troll say. Gasp. I know. Ooh, it, it's like saying I am Iron Man. I am <laughs> troll say. You know what? If, if the Zeo Gold Ranger can pull through and beat the White Ranger and then even stand a chance against the Green Ranger, you don't even know, like, my dreams would come true. Like, I, I'd, <laughs> I'd probably quit my job in, in a shrine or something. Like, I don't even know. Why don't you get uh, AP to do the groans of indifference and just kind of splice them in, and no one will ever know she wasn't here? <laughs> you know what? That's, that's, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to isolate a clip of her groan of indifference. I'm just, I think I'm going to insert it. You know, I, I kind of feel bad because I, I, I picked on her like uh, on two different podcasts in a row now. Like I picked on her just as a joke <laughs> on Talking Toku with the Tom segment, you know, yeah. and I just picked on her like that girl is not going to like me. And now on Ranger Command Power Hour. Hey, 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 it's the Ranger Command Power Hour. Today on the Power Hour, Episode 7, Ranger Favorites, recorded on April 1st, 2014. Welcome to the Ranger Command Power Hour on the Four-Eyed Radio Network. It's time to ranger up with your host, I'm Eric, also known as Trekkie B47. This episode is brought to you by Raven Designs, illustration and design that fit your personality. For samples and inquiries, visit ravencruise.com. Hello, Ranger Nation. Uh, with me, uh, you'll notice I have a lack of hosts. Uh, Secret Ranger fan is doing her thing with college and some big play production. The cinema slob is just unavailable right now. So I brought in two special guest co-hosts, one at literally 10 minutes ago. Welcome back, Batgirl, a.k.a. the second Batgirl on Twitter. And Hi. Chris... AKA kickback from Taco Nation. I mean Toku Nation. It's the same thing, really. <laughs> well, welcome you guys. Thank you so much for doing this. No prob. Hey, you're very welcome. It's not like I have anything to <laughs> I'm I'm so. sorry to, I'm sorry to hear that you're having so many issues with with your podcast right now, Chris. Yeah, uh, I don't even want to talk. This is like the biggest, the worst April Fool's prank that the world could play on me after. Uh, nah, well, nah. Okay. <laughs> we, we'll not focus on that, but I want to congratulate you on the success of uh, Taco Nation today on April Fool's Day. Thank you. It was, <laughs> it was like five months of preparation and like 45 minutes worth of actually doing stuff. <laughs> so it was, we came up with the idea last year, like, that'd be funny. And then it last night, it's like, oh, crap, that's right. 
<laughs> we have to do this. <laughs> so there's four of us. There was four of us involved in getting everything ready, and and we decided not to run it all day just because people you get have grumpy. a site to run. Well, people get grumpy when they can't actually talk about what they want to talk about. <laughs> so it was just for a few hours, and we called it good. And Jordan Deno's already got plans for the next one, which. That's way too early to think about, but okay. My, I hate April Fool's Day, but I really, really wish that that jewelry was real. Oh, you mean the one that uh, Power Rangers? Yes, I want them. I want them all. That's like a couple years ago when they did the the Morphune. I would have bought that too. Or is the joke that they just that they're not actually going to ever market to women? I don't know. I want the jewelry. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of funny when they make an April Fool's prank that people actually want, where they're like, No, that, that would be actually cool? be a good product. <laughs> I know, it would sell. It'd be uh, great. I, I mean, didn't they end up making those Tauntaun sleeping bags that were a joke a couple of years ago? Yeah, Think Geek is known to actually bring to life their April Fool's jokes. Okay. They, they've done that for several years now. Okay. I'm just saying, you know, Saban, if you want to, you have a market. <laughs> Hi, I'll give you my money. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of like the little Gokaiger pin. I it. want that so badly. <laughs> I would get if that was an earring. I would get my ears pierced for that. No lie. Nice. <laughs> Seriously, no, no, no question. Okay, well, let's move on to the news. <laughs> First, the Morphin Madness final round is March 31st, which is going on right now. Get your votes in by midnight on April 6th and to vote for the final the final five. I have stopped voting because it's rigged. Yeah, I think we've all talked about this enough. <laughs> <laughs> vote, vote if you want to. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, I give up. Yeah, like, whatever. Give up. Next, Austin St. John. He recently released a message to his fans on YouTube. You can find that video on youtube.com slash Austin ST John video. I'll actually insert the audio of that video because I think it was pretty cool. Hey y'all, this is ASJ. I, uh, I've been gone for some time now. I've been in the Middle East for so long now that I think I forgot what home looks like. But I've been amazed, absolutely amazed, at how many of you are still out there. That is so cool, man. I'm, I'm, I'm humbled, I'm flattered, and uh, I'm just amazed. I can't wait to get together with you guys, meet you all, shake hands, sign autographs, take pictures, and hear about your lives. See who and what you've become, where you've gone, what you've done. Where were you when you were watching me? You know, were you little? Were you a teenager? Were you babysitting? Were you an adult with kids? What was your life like? I, uh, I, I can't wait to hear it all. And uh, I'm just amazed. I'm amazed and so flattered. Humbled to be, uh, to be requested by so many. Thank you all so much. I'll admit I get a little misty-eyed. A little, a little misty-eyed. You want a tissue? Yeah, yeah, I do. Okay, are you going to start crying after the video plays? Yeah, I mean, I'm just going <laughs> to... It was so touching. But they have more convention announcements. He's going to be at Comic Palooza in Texas, May 23rd through 25th. Phoenix Comic Con, June 5th through 8th at Phoenix, Arizona. Florida Super Con, July 4th through the 6th in Miami. And finally, Power Morphicon, August 22nd through the 24th in Pasadena. So we're going to get to reactions on that later with the Ranger Nation answers. And finally, news-related, Shout Factory just released seasons 13 through 17, SPD through RPM. They've also opened up the Legacy Collection to international fans for a total of $800. Well, my SPD through RPM set got here today, which is very exciting. I'll have to watch. You're in that, right? Yes, I'm in the Collect Them All feature. Yeah, I have to watch that. I got my set today, too, and it's pretty gorgeous. It it. is. It's a very nice-looking box set, which means I now have them all. I'm very (laughs) excited. I I have Netflix right now. That's that's good enough for me. I will pick them up eventually, but I'm like, it was my birthday present to myself. So oh, hey, there you go. Oh, Nothing birthday. wrong with that. Yes, happy birthday. It's next week, but okay, close enough. Happy well, birthday yeah. in the future. Thank you. <laughs> I know our last episode was all about Jason David Frank and all of that, 
Batgirl, you actually have a story on your experience? I have with two. TV? One of them is my story, and one of them is from my trivia team, because I went to trivia, like, literally just got back an hour ago, and um, one of my trivia team was telling me, oh, yeah, I accidentally walked into his panel at Dragon Con, and wow, he's such a something I can't say because I'll get bleeped. Say it anyway, and we'll bleep you. <laughs> there's, there's a swear jar. Yeah. Uh, he's such a <laughs> and basically he apparently kept like just talking about how great he is and how he's the greatest stranger ever and how you know when someone asked what did he think of like the current direction of the franchise and all he could come up with was well if I was in charge I'd be doing this 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 and this and I'm just like Ugh. there's a reason that when I went to Dragon Con I every panel that Karen Ashley and Walter Jones were on but I did not go to any of his panel I'm surprised he didn't like drop kick from the roof and like invade their panels like he does at other conventions uh, well that's what i was about to get to so the first time i <laughs> saw him well that's not true i saw him briefly at power morphicon too but did not bother with his autograph because i don't care i don't like tommy i'm sorry universe <laughs> <laughs> how dare you yeah yes. But I went to Anime Fest Orlando in 2011 with my friend Kim, who unfortunately passed away almost two years ago. And I went because Jason David Frank was going to be there and she was madly in love with him. So we got there and he announces one of his special dinner things and she's got her checkbook out like before they even finish announcing the price. And I'm like, fine. And we get there and he spends the entire time like, first of all, did not tell us what the money was going to. He was actually raising money for his church, which he had not mentioned in that and some of it was going to a cause I'm not particularly happy with and then the rest of it was just okay this is the most overpriced pizza in the entire universe and then he spends the entire time lecturing us on being a better person and if you're not constantly <laughs> motivated then you're a failure at life and I'm sitting there going well I'm happy with my life and whatever so I guess Jason David Frank thinks I'm a failure at life <laughs> <laughs> And then he's oh, just, no. <laughs> yeah, so he's just going on and on about it for the entire time. And I'm like, I really did not want to pay. Like, I think it was like 40 or 50 bucks for Domino's pizza and to get preached at. Oh, it was no. just ridiculous. Was his wife in the background, like counting the 20s and stuff that were handed um, to her? Because I had that happen at my experience on a VIP thing. I don't remember. I was mostly there because Kim had basically dragged me along. <laughs> <laughs> But she also ended up buying Blake Foster's communicator at the end of it, so, you know. Well, hey. <laughs> so at least something came out of Anime Fest Orlando. That was pretty cool. Oh, and Johnny Young Bosch hugged me, so that was also great. <laughs> now I'm jealous. I yeah. want a Johnny Young Bosch hug. I might have squeaked. It was kind of ridiculous. <laughs> I, I, dude, I would squeak too. I, and then he sang a song about how he hated his hair in Turbo. It was kind of amazing. I got to see Johnny Young Bosch for the first time. He played with his band I Shine at a bar in Chicago last year. So I got to go to that. I actually met him outside. He was just kind of hanging out outside before the show started. And, you know, I'm walking up with my green Mighty Morphin hoodie. He's like, hey, man, that's a really cool hoodie. It's like, can I get a picture? And so he asked me for a picture. So I, I took a picture with him and his band. I don't know if you guys have heard I Shine. They're amazing. I, I have... Um, a bunch of their CDs, so yeah. Yeah, I They're became great. an instant fan because that was my first show seeing them, and I immediately bought five of their CDs at the show. Because <laughs> I just love just Johnny really Bosch's dedication to wanting to be the Pink Ranger. Every <laughs> okay, it was at the same panel where he sang the song about hating his hair and turbo. It's one of his panels where he'll sing the answers, and it's kind of great. <laughs> um, I hope he does one at the next Morphicon if he's going or not. Somebody asked him if you could be another color and he's like i want to be pink ranger because they get all the storylines and oh. then his april fool's day prank today was i'm coming back to power rangers as the pink ranger which i saw that <laughs> i love his dedication to wanting to be the pink ranger make it happen bandai and saban and you bring right. him back for the Tokusha adaption and <laughs> can partially be granted you know? can, or That's you true. know when they're going to do dino charge then they can get rid of all the girls <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. Okay. Okay. Aside from all the, I think, 
I think this was cathartic. We got all the JDF out of our system. You'll never get it out of your system entirely. Because <laughs> every time you do, like a Facebook message pops up or something on Instagram, and you're like, that son of a bitch. <laughs> and it just starts all over again. That's been my week. I've been like, yeah. oh, we're done. No more. Like Sunday, I was like, okay, we're done. We're done. And then something pops up, and you're like, that <laughs> oh. Rage. Okay, well, it was cathartic for the last two episodes, so hopefully that'll <laughs> that'll take us into the next month. I hope. I um, hope so. So I kind of wanted to do lighthearted episode because last episode was pretty heavy on the on the JDF and his craziness. We're gonna talk about some of our Power Ranger favorites and. I took a lot of these questions from the Power Rangers 30 Day Challenge on Tumblr that's been going around, but also Second Batgirl created 30 Days of Power Rangers on her WordPress all the way back in 2010. We'll give that link out in our show notes and I'll tweet it out and that kind of stuff. I can't believe like I actually remember doing it. I was like, I'm pretty <laughs> sure I've seen some of these before. Oh, right. I came up with one. I was pulling live journal and then we did. Oh, it. live journal. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I remember I'd been pulling one years ago. And it took me forever to go find the link. <laughs> yeah. We're just kind of going to go through these and maybe expand on these answers and have a good time with it okay. so first before off, we do it can i just oh. say favorite does not necessarily equal best favorite yes. means favorite so you know we're not judging quality we're just saying this is the one that personally means the most to me yeah that's that's a really good point because i have some favorites that aren't the best <laughs> and are probably, you know, opposite to popular opinion or whatever. The big overreaching one is favorite series. Chris, how about you? What's your favorite Power Ranger series? Oh man, this, this one's tough. Cause I have two that I, I adore for different reasons. Uh, I would say like nostalgia wise, my favorite would be Zio just because I thought it was the perfect continuation for like Mighty Morphin, like, you know, not to like quote the theme song or thing, but you know, they're stronger than before and all that fun stuff. Yeah. And and I just thought never apologize for quoting the theme song. Yeah, <laughs> I know, but it, it just works so well. But but yeah, so I, I like that, but then I also like RPM because it was a really good example, just in my opinion, of what can happen when you have someone in a group of writers and a director who just instead of following what Sentai did, actually create their own story. And in this case, it actually created their own universe and a mm -hmm. single series that, you know, is still easily watchable to this day without going, without groans of indifference as you watch it. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's back and forth. It's, it's kind of hard for me to pick between the two, but, you know, there you go. Oh, that's a solid answer. How about you, Becco? Okay, he kind of took my answer, so... <laughs> um, well, why, why are they your wise, I love Zio because I love Adam and Tanya, period. <laughs> the Adam and Tanya show. <laughs> but really, it, my favorite season, just in terms of pure nostalgia, is the second half of Mighty Morphin Season 2 with the Stone Canyon trio. Adam, mm -hmm. Rocky, and Aisha. I liked Power Rangers before that. Two of my three favorite episodes of all time come from that season. In case you're wondering, Mirror of Regret and Goldar's Vice Versa. Yes, I have a favorite. It's Adam. He's wonderful. <laughs> You're so, not biased at all. <laughs> I am not at all biased, really. Okay, I got back into the fandom because once a ranger and Adam was on it, maybe you should see if it's on YouTube. I had dropped out of the fandom after Lost Galaxy. I did not mm. watch Power Rangers for years. And then that happened and I watched all of Power Rangers in three months. Wow. Because I found out about it while <laughs> RPM was airing. Oh, okay. But in terms of actual favorite season, in terms of like what I think is the best put together in terms of storyline and acting, besides RPM, is probably Time Force. Like, yeah, I love the really characters. Good. I love the villains. I love the villain's motivation. I love Nadira. I love Jen to a ridiculous extent. Um, we're going to get to Six Ranger later, but Eric is probably my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we'll agree on that yeah. one. <laughs> So I, I just really, and I love Movie Madness. I'm sorry. Can we please have more of that? <laughs> <laughs> My favorite season, nostalgia-wise, has to be the first season of Mighty Morphin, just because that's what got me into it. I have so many fond memories as a child uh, with the first season of Power Rangers. So nostalgia wise, that's my favorite, but you know, I go back and watch my Morphin and I'm, you know, rolling my eyes so much and 
can barely get through it. But it has um, pudgy but... pig, and yet nobody has made a pudgy pig stuffed animal. I don't understand why. That's a Ranger Command copyright now. Pudgy pig plush. That's pudgy pig. Pudgy pig plushy. <laughs> I want I'm one. Mister. <laughs> I think my favorite series, hands down, has to be SPD. Uh, that's It was a year after I got back into Power Rangers after Dino Thunder, but SPD was the one I was most invested in. My little brother, that was his first Power Rangers series. I got to meet most of the actors that same year at the Yomacon convention. To me, that whole year and that whole series just solidified Power Rangers to me. I'm like, this is what the Power Rangers series needs to be. I just love the humor and the actors and the set design and the look of it and all of it. So the SPD Bridge and Sid show is pretty great. Bridge is high up there. <laughs> <laughs> Next on the list, favorite villain. Okay, are we talking strictly like main villain, sidekick villain, monster uh, of the week, uh, foot soldiers? Because that's four different answers. Let's just stick with main villain. Main villain of the show. Are we counting Astronema as the main villain or secondary villain? <laughs> okay. <laughs> the, main, the main villains in their respective season tiers. Gr- villain groups favored out of those villain groups. <laughs> if that wasn't complicated enough. <laughs> what? What's what, what's happening? I don't... Favorite main villain. Rancic. Oh, Actually, I would... no, I take it back. Rita. Definitely Rita. Why do you say that? Part of it is still the nostalgia factor, but part of it is just that she's awesome. She's the queen of evil. She's been, you know, stuck in a jar for 10,000 years. <laughs> she comes out, and what's she going to do? She's getting her revenge, and her wand is great. Plus, she has amazing minions. Yes. How about you, Chris? I, I was going to ag- agree, but then I guess they were disagreeing, because I was going to say Rancic, mostly because if you look at the story arc, I'm a big sucker for writing. That's kind of like what I went to school for and all that fun stuff. Mm. So I'm really big into that. And from the beginning of Time Force all the way through the team-up episode in Wild Force, Rancic and, and the story of the characters around him with Nadira, it's just a perfect beginning and an end. He gets the best arc out of all the villains. They exactly. Yeah. The, the nostalgia factor is really high here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Chris, you took my answer. <laughs> I love sorry. No, no, it's fine. I love Rancic for all those reasons. If I were to pick someone different, wow, who would I pick? My second favorite villain. Hmm. It's definitely none of the newer villains from the past what? few years because they're kind of just bland. <laughs> With the exception of Tanaya 7, I really dug Tanaya 7. If after Rancic, I think I would put Tanaya 7 up there. Just Tanaya because Tanaya 7 is great. I love her, and her yeah. actress is so nice. I would love to meet her someday. I only know, see her through Twitter and then like a bunch of the things that she was doing through Teen Wolf, which I then made everyone I know who watches Teen Wolf watch RPM because I'm a horrible <laughs> person. Um, and I'd just be like, no, no, let me tell you about Tanaya Hell <laughs> or Cora Seven. Pick, take your pick of how I'm ruining her name. I thought Kilobyte was a good addition to that whole, whole group, too, in RPM in the latter, later part of the series. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The General Kilobyte. Yes. Yeah, he was he was kind of bad at- yeah, he was. I, they did that early on, like with In Space and with Lost mm-hmm. Galaxy, introducing new sidekick villains towards the latter half of the series. That were really awesome. And then they kind of stopped doing that really until RPM, to be honest. Like, yeah, I thought that was a nice, that's kind of a nice throwback to some of those early storylines that we got. So. They did a lot of like the um, female villains really well. Like Astronema is amazing. Oh, uh, Astronema, Tanaya Seven, Trakina, Trakina, yeah, Trakina, Morgana, um, Nadira, Nadira, yeah, Jindrax and Toxica, who are great. Yeah, they're, they're pretty good. No one's uh, mentioned the girls from Ninja Storm yet. Come on. Okay, Marion oh. Capri are pretty great. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 yeah, they're really good. Wow, there is a lot of them. I really like all the lady villains. Speaking of the newer seasons, I have really high hopes that Vrak's story is not over yet, and maybe I mean we still have a bunch of episodes we don't have synopsises for, and I'm still hoping for some Ghost Ager footage continuing to be used. <laughs> well, the thing. 
Yeah, they still have perfect footage from the Gokaiger movie of the Gosei Great Mecha completely destroyed on the ground, and they're having that big... You know, I wish they would have used that for the finale of Megaforce and completely killed off those powers. But that's another topic. <laughs> yeah. I have some hope for Wrath. I mean, we don't have all the things, so maybe we will get to see more of the Ghost Ager ending, um, that last arc that never got adapted. So yeah. I have some hope. I really like Wrath. I think he's a really good character who has a lot of potential, but right now he has no ending and it was Megaforce was so rushed. Yeah, I really like that they did try to make that connection that he was also royalty and Vicar is his brother. And I like where they're going with that. I just wish we would have some scenes early on in this episode of maybe him struggling or where he's at. Even if it's just like one scene at the end of an episode, he's in a dark cave, like I'm recovering, dun, dun, dun. Something just to keep the momentum of that story going. because. I, I think I think we will get more Ghost Ager footage in there, and the only reason I think that, if you've watched Gokaiger, which I think all of us have, or at least seen enough yes. of it to understand what's going on, <laughs> the, the last part of it, like maybe the last like 15, 20 episodes, anything with Bosco in it, anything you know that deals mm-hmm. with team-ups that aren't going to happen, you can't do that, so you're going to kind of run out of footage that you can use. I have a feeling they'll end up going back to Ghost Sager and using the Ghost Sager footage that they had with the final form of Rack and stuff like that. And that'll be not the finale, but that'll be like episode 19. Like leading up to the Legend War kind of. Exactly. And the Legend War will be like 1920, 19 setting it up, 20 actually happening. And this will be like 15, 16, 17, 18 or something like that. That's why we haven't had those episode descriptions. Mm -hmm. Mm. That's that's my thought process because I think you'll see Ultra Mode come back because those toys are still active and they're still selling them. Yeah. You know, they're still being solicited in new toy waves. So I just, that's just my own personal feeling on it. I, I'm, I'm trying to take that whole approach of, okay, if I'm like Jonathan Zach or, you know, how do I want to make things not make sense? That's how I would do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still like, right, let's just bring back everything we didn't use from the last half of Ghost Sager into Super Mega Force. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your impression of him, like in the wires room? Like, ah. <laughs> I just I, <laughs> I see him in like a very dark room and people come in like Mr. Zacker and he's like Meow. he's got like a little shaved cat kind of like uh, the, the guy from Austin Powers just like yeah he's just stroking it and going one billion dollars you want me to not rewrite your episode give me one billion dollars. <laughs> I do, that brings up another question too, and not to take it way off topic, but oh, hopefully this will come out eventually. This but whole thing is off topic. Just go but, ahead. Because <laughs> Fury Diamond kind of hinted that he'd gotten an email from one of his sources that said there were some some big changes in the production side for Dino Charge. The the hopeful part of me that loves to get my heart broken every <laughs> single day of my life would be if they had Zach or removed and put someone else in charge or I don't know because he tweeted that out yeah a week ago that he was excited about some some notes that came from the production of this news of the dino charge show that are going to be different but he couldn't talk about it hint people anyone who's in the fandom who tweets on a tweeter twitter whatever if you have secret inside sources just to save yourself the heartache don't post that you have inside sources and don't post that you have information that you can't reveal from inside sources because all that's going to happen is a lot of hate on you. So Yeah, I see all the hate lobbied at him for that kind of stuff and it's like, kind of brought it upon yourself. I know something you don't know. I don't think that's what it is. I mean, no. I, I know him personally and he is, out of everybody I've ever met that likes Power Rangers, he is one of the most passionate and most yeah. easily excitable people about it. Like, he is so uh, excited. I'm, I'm not- saying that i'm just saying it, it comes right. across that way and that's why he's getting a lot of yeah. backlash about it for, the, for those who don't know him personally it would come across like that but i mean i met him at toy fair he couldn't be more passionate about power rangers i thought i was really <laughs> passionate about power rangers but umesh he's really passionate about power rangers so i think his tweets are more on an excitement like oh my gosh i'm so excited for this information and i can't wait until everyone else finds out about it when it happens kind of a thing exactly back to the the, what is what do you call this the show notes back to the show notes the 
the show notes. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. This is no- <laughs> Whatever, it's just, you know, the podcast is just going to be a lot of fun this week. We're talking about random things. Yeah, yeah, this this is the podcast of random. I might even change the name of it, who knows. There we go, the podcast of random. <laughs> favorite single ranger. I know our next question is favorite sixth ranger, so I guess you can include a sixth ranger, but overall, favorite single power ranger character. Adam. Oh, gee, <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised. <laughs> so what is it about Adam that you like so much? Okay, and this is what I explained to Johnny Young Bosch when I squeaked at him. Um, <laughs> I got my hug. I was a super, super shy kid. I liked to write, but I was really, really kind of socially awkward. And you never get to usually see that kind as a hero. So when we get Adam, who had self-esteem issues canonically, mm-hmm. like the Mirror of Regret was an episode that resonated with me incredibly strongly. Seeing that and seeing the ranger who was a shy kid and then later finding out had taken creative writing three times, and I was like, oh, that's awesome. That's what I'm taking. I seriously over-identified with him in Mirror of Regret. And that's one of the reasons it was super important to me, just mm-hmm. seeing a ranger who had the same struggles that I was going through and then watching him conquer his own self-esteem issues and still get to be the hero like that was incredibly powerful i think i talked about that a little bit last time like i, I talked about kimberly also and why she was important to me and she's yes. my second answer but seeing adam who was the shy kid who didn't like being on tv and who was not a nerd but just kind of shy and couldn't really talk to girls in his or anything like that was just and he still got to be the hero i mean he was what the second or third longest serving ranger Right. Yeah, he's he's been in more episodes, yeah. That was incredible. So he is my favorite. I mirror of regret and also always a chance are my favorite episodes of all time, which I guess answers a later question. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Chris? Well, my my favorite single ranger. I'm I'm looking at it from like a, a non sixth ranger standpoint because mm-hmm. I mean we should all know who my favorite sixth ranger is at this point. Yes, but <laughs> my favorite single ranger I'd probably say would be Ziggy from RPM. <laughs> and and the only reason I say that is because he reminds me so much of myself, especially when I was younger. <laughs> and exactly what it's like, you know. Hey, I'm, can we use these powers to pick up chicks? You know and. and <laughs> For that one, you know, and the fact that at the same time, he wants to do good things, he does good things, but he doesn't say anything about them. But at the same time, people look at him as quirky and they don't really want to hang around him. They don't think he's worthy of, quote unquote, being a Power Ranger or what have you. That that just resonates with me. I don't know. It just... And again, I just thought the character was very well written and added a lot of humor that wasn't slapstick or in-your-face humor. It was actual well-written humor and well-written comedy into a a kid show that didn't feel like a kid show. So, but that's Ziggy was actually the character that got my friend who I was trying to make the show um, because watch it because of Teen Wolf was actually the character. Him and Doctor K. That's why I got my best friend to watch RPM. I've got Um, I got people hooked on to Power Rangers specifically from RPM and most importantly Ziggy. Yeah. <laughs> like I was like, hey, so there's a failbot mafia ex mafia guy who wouldn't hurt orphans. I think this is your character type. Yeah. Ziggy, Ziggy's a bad. I, I love Ziggy. I wish that he'd return to the show, even for a guest appearance, because he's just he's adorable. That, that would be amazing. And I'm so glad that him and the actress who played Doctor K, Olivia Tennant. I'm so glad that they actually got together in real life and got married. They're my second favorite real life ranger couple because I'm <laughs> sorry, Damon and Trakina are my favorite. No, that, that's a good one. <laughs> um, my favorite single ranger and. I think we're going to continue our tradition of picking Green Rangers as our favorite (laughs) because my favorite single ranger is Bridge. It's Bridge. I love Matt Austin's portrayal of this kind of quirky, weird character, much like Ziggy. He's just kind of awkward and weird, but in a different way. I think Bridge is a little bit more crazy. (laughs) He's crazy in a good way because... He's still smart, and he's still one of the best Power Rangers, and I just like his his weird humor and on his head and the whole buttery thing. Like I say, do you butter your toast? I do butter my toast. There you go. And every time I wiggle my fingers, uh, it's just, <laughs> that's what happens. Um, Thanks. But, yeah. <laughs> I can sleep well at night now. <laughs> Uh, the things you know, uh, get to know on Ranger Command. No, and he's but... the only Jewish Power Ranger. Yay. Yes. E- even though I'm not Jewish. I am. I'll be the token Jew for us. 
<laughs> he's got some great one-liners. I love the fact that he came back and at the end of SPD, he was the Blue Ranger. And then in Overdrive, he was promoted to the Red Ranger. I just find it funny that Bridge is leading a team of SPD <laughs> after the series. That just cracks me up. That cries out for watch. all the fanfic in the world. I would, I would watch that series in a heartbeat. Me, me too. too. <laughs> it would just be hilarious, I think, personally. But I think my favorite episode is Abridged. Obviously, that's the one that's all about him. But him figuring out the whole caper on his own in his weird way was pretty fun to see. Not going to lie, I would just watch an entire buddy cop show about him. (laughs) I want to see him and Kruger (laughs) as the good cop, bad cop. (laughs) Like a a duo cop show? Yeah. I want it to be psych, basically. Like, there you go. Except Bridge actually does have psychic powers. Oh, wow. Wow, SPD psych. (laughs) Sounds like something from out of the 90s. (laughs) SPD psych! Favorite sixth ranger. Oh, it's totally Tommy, right? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> this, this just got awkward. <laughs> I'll start. My favorite sixth is Eric, Quantum Ranger. I Are we going to have to fight over who gets to choose Eric? No, no. You, we, we can both love Eric equally. Okay. <laughs> First, it was so cool that I share a namesake with one of the awesome six rangers of all time. That's pretty cool. Totally not biased in any way. His character was so different from what we had seen before. He was a loner. He was in it for his own personal goals. And in the beginning, you thought, man, is he going to be an evil ranger, but not under a spell or not anything like that? He's just kind of a bad I loved his whole character progression throughout the series and the story with Wes and their conflicts together. I just thought it was cool that we got another Red Ranger in the same series. He got his own Battleizer, his own Zord and Megazord. To me, I think he's one of the best. And not just because of all his powers, but I thought the character was very dynamic as well. <laughs> what are your thoughts, that girl, on, on Eric? That That's pretty much... The same reasons, but since you took him, I guess I will have to go with probably either... Okay, the thing is, I don't actually care about the Six Rangers generally. I think they're overpowered and annoying. Yeah, (laughs) there goes all the hate mail I'm going to get. Okay. um... (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I like some of them... Are we counting RJ and Trent as Sixth Rangers, even though they're not technically Six? Yes, I'm g- I'm going to allow it, because like, their intros were pretty much Sixth Ranger. Like, I like RJ and Trent. I, I like Trent. Uh, I think he gets one of the better evil Rangers turned good. Um, I like Ryan kind of for the same reason. Mm-hmm. I adore RJ, but I think I'm going to save him actually for the favorite mentor question. Ooh, spoilers. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> probably Antonio, actually. I love Antonio. Oh, that's, wow, a, a samurai response. I wasn't expecting that. You know, now that was until I started thinking about it, I'm like... Hmm. You know what? I thought his character was one of the best shining parts of a polished turd that was samurai. I like samurai. I know. I, I know. The few, the did few, I hear the that proud, right? the samurai fans. Um, did, did you just call it a polished turd? Yes, I did. That's so rude. <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone that likes samurai. I just, it's it's at the bottom of my list. It, Super it, samurai it was better. Issue. It got better. It got better as it went along. I really like Antonio, though. I kind of like the kind of in this because, like, he had a friend and he made a promise to Jaden and he is going to stick by that. And no matter what, it is not because of, I mean, yes, it's to save the world and everything, but he is going to protect Jaden no matter what. And I'm trying not to call him his boyfriend, but, um... (laughs) Sorry, I have shepherd goggles on. (laughs) Uh, Antonio was one of the best parts of Samurai, so I really enjoyed his character, too. He was great. I actually like him better than his Shinkendra counterpart, so... (laughs) <laughs> I didn't watch Shinkendra. I'll have to get into that. But uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of just because I'm sick of seeing that footage, I guess. So e- even though probably Shinkendra is probably one of the greatest Sentai from what I've heard, I it's going to be a while. It's super overrated. The thing about Shinkendra is it was the one that was airing after Power Rangers had its temporary cancellation and there was nothing new. 
Shinkendra is a lot of fun. Kaoru is fantastic. A lot of them are great, but there's so much filler in the middle. It's super boring. Chris, I, I think there's no question what your favorite sixth ranger is. This is true, but I have my reasons and they're very short and concise. Okay. <laughs> my, my, my favorite sixth ranger is the Zeo Gold Ranger because I think it has the most badass suit. I think it has the most badass theme song to go with it, the Gold Gold Ranger theme song. Mm-hmm. It's the only Sixth Ranger to technically be played by three different people in the same season, because you had the uh, slaughter, the pronunciation, the Di Filippo, is that right? Uh, the, triplets. The Di Filippo triplets. Yep. Di Filippo triplets played Trey, but Trey was voiced by Brad Hawkins. Yeah, Ryan like Steele. Ryan Steele from VR <laughs> Troopers, yeah. who are all replaced by Austin St. John, <laughs> the, Jason, the original Mighty Morphin Red Ranger. <laughs> And I just, yeah, bad ass. Totally should have won more from Madness. You guys all suck. That's all. <laughs> Are there any girls left, out of curiosity? In, in, in oh, Madness, Madness or the yeah. world? Or... Uh, <laughs> that was um, a very vague question. Sorry. In Morphin Madness, are there any girls left? The, the, Jen. Jen versus... Trini. Trini. And, slash, uh, slash Aisha. And guess who's winning? Nostalgia goggles! <laughs> Between Aisha and Jen, Tommy's winning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, briefly, I tweeted this earlier, but my predictions for the top five are MMPR yellow, red, green, and then Phantom and Titanium. So it's going to be like the Nostalgia Pack plus these other guys. <laughs> that's what it's gonna be i'm shaking my head right now i'm sorry it's okay i'm getting dizzy i'm gonna stop <laughs> <laughs> next favorite mentor rj <laughs> Whoa, why is that rj is one of the few mentors that actually manages to balance helping them by giving them the information that they need and letting them grow as a team zordon is a failbot i love him but he is kind of a failure Oh, yes, everyone's been kidnapped, and I forgot to tell you because I wasn't paying any attention until one of you called me, and I'm like, yes, of course someone just got kidnapped. (laughs) Demetria is also a foul bot. I think what they were trying to go with, well, she's trying to make them think for themselves and everything, but she was just kind of a foul bot. (laughs) RJ, on the other hand, the stool metaphor in the first episodes, that is one of the greatest piece of actual mentoring that's ever been done on Power Rangers. (laughs) He seriously cared about the team, and he did a really great job of also balancing being a ranger on the team and still being a mentor without taking over from Casey, unlike Dr. Oliver, <laughs> who is actually my favorite version of Tommy. Yeah, my, mine too. I've said that before. Ditto. But RJ did a really great job mentoring them and caring for the team, and yay, RJ. Go team RJ. I think my favorite mentor would have to be Captain Mitchell from Lightspeed Rescue. He's my second favorite. I call him Captain <laughs> Awesome on Ranger Recap <laughs> Where we're going to uh, update one of these years. <laughs> <laughs> I like that he was able to lead this team and also teach them valuable lessons. I think one of my favorite ones was when he taught Carter in one of the early episodes that the whole fire and the explosion, like trying to save one person might not be the best option at that time. Gasoline. Let's get you all out of here. If I hadn't put out the fire first, the whole place would have exploded. Everyone would have been hurt. Sometimes the obvious choice is the wrong choice. The training exercise. You knew the canisters could explode. It isn't easy being a leader. You learn tough lessons every single day. I'm not sure I'm cut out to be a ranger. I am. I'm more sure now than ever. Your friends need your help. Get going. I'm on my way. I know, I I love that whole episode. I liked that he had this family involved that were also Rangers and he had some personal stakes in throughout the whole season. Uh, I thought he was a really good leader and I really liked his character. What about you, Chris? 
For favorite mentor, I'm going to say Dr. K, just because I enjoyed the fact that when the Rangers were being stupid, she had no problem telling them they were being stupid. <laughs> As opposed to every other mentor who's like, no, I don't think that way, or you must overpower. She'd be like, what are you, dumb? <laughs> like, you can't do that. Like, that's stupid. Don't be stupid. You're going to get yourself killed. I just That's a more realistic mentor. Second place would be Gose, just because it's so easy to make fun of them. <laughs> You, you don't mean troll say? <laughs> it's just there's so many parodies of Gosei out there. I think it's great. I think there's a reason there's so many parodies of Gosei out there. He's just does he the even thing... serve a does he serve a purpose to the show other than as a backdrop as a set? Yes, to show everything that was wrong with Zordon because he has all of Zordon's worst qualities and none of his good ones. Yeah. Um, Dr. K is amazing, and I love how she'll occasionally, you know, yell at them in her little, like, bunny slippers. <laughs> right? Yeah, she'll right. be in pajamas, and we'll totally come down on the Rangers. <laughs> That's what uh, I'm about. Favorite morpher and weapon? So this is kind of a two-part question. They can be different. They don't have to be associated with each other. So favorite morpher first. No one has a favorite morpher. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here's the thing. I really dislike all the cell phone morphers. That didn't stop me from owning a lot of them. All of them. (laughs) I think the Zeomorphers are really cool. I like the morph with that. I think it's one of the more interesting ones. I like the Operation Overdrive morphers. Just because you can do some really cool morphs with running it off villains when you're trying to fight and everything. Or maybe uh, the Overdrive trackers. They were really a cool idea. Yeah. Um, I wish they would do something more like that more often. And I do like the Jungle Fury sunglasses. I'm trying not to call them by the Bowkinder names. I really like the Overdrive morphers. Yeah, I thought the overdrive, or not not overdrive, the Jungle Fury Morphers were cool just because it wasn't anything from Sentai. It was totally different. And when they first showed up, I thought they were an odd choice, but at least it was something different other than a cell phone, because I'm kind of getting sick of those two. I am so (laughs) sick of the cell phone Morphers. Oh, favorite Morpher? I was going to say the Jungle Fury sunglasses, just because they're so over the top, and in my opinion, just make no sense. (laughs) So I, I like them the best because it's like, what? My my second favorite would be the, the one they used in the show for the Zeo Gold Ranger, which was none. <laughs> <laughs> Just skipped it all together. They're like, yeah, we'll, we'll release a toy, but we're not going to use it in the show. Uh, my favorite weapon, though, would be the Magnum Defender sword slash shotgun. I forget what it's called. Ooh, that oh, one is nice. My favorite morpher. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a tough one. Ooh, I actually I like the time force morphers. Even though they're it's like a simple wrist morpher, I love the little wrist action that they do that I can never figure out how to do. And I don't know, I like that it's it's simple but it's got holograms. I mean, they can call it holograms and all kinds of cool things. It's futuristic. It's nice. I like it. They're <laughs> sleek. <laughs> for favorite weapon for all my dislike of Tommy, I'm sorry, the dragon dagger is still awesome. <laughs> it is. Yeah. There's yeah. a reason I have that pre-order. <laughs> yeah, well, the whole day that JDF Madness <laughs> went down is the day I got my dragon dagger. I was like, are you freaking serious? Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, I'm sitting there angry at my computer while holding the dragon dagger in my hand. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Please music. What's not to like? <laughs> I, I played the, the song while I cried. It was. My favorite weapon is Titanium Rangers like axe gun. What whatever that was. Thing. I think that works. No, I, it's Thanks. called. Oh. Oh, hold on. You you guys just did a gallery I know, we on it. just did a gallery of it. So it, hold on, hold on. Let me get past all the taco stuff here. <laughs> uh, the titanium laser is literally the name of the gun, but I don't know if they list the name of the axe. I, I really don't think it had a... I don't think they named the axe, but it was called the titanium laser, but it had the well, axe mode. Well, I like the titanium laser. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this next one is a three-part question. Favorite Megazord, Combination, and Single Zord? Ooh, can I say Single Zord first? Go ahead. Okay, I love the sword hat from Samurai. It's a sword and a hat. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> so the so the swordfish zord. Yes. Okay. Look, I did um on live journal. Yes, yes, I still pay attention to that sometimes. Um, but <laughs> I did an overview of the Power Rangers fandom, and when I got to Samurai, I actually listed the sword hat as a character. <laughs> It was, well, it was part reason to convince people to watch the show, and I'm sorry, it's a sword and a hat. What is not to like? That's a good point. <laughs> I was super, super disappointed when watching Go Hydra, and that was not actually the ultimate power. So... <laughs> 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 I have my priorities. They're a little skewed, and I care about what I care about, but I did. I never go out, okay, with the exception of Super Mega Force, I almost never go out and buy all, like, the auxiliary swords or whatever, but mm-hmm. I went out and bought the swordfish sword because of the hat. I don't own any of the others. Like, I don't own the tiger one. I don't own the beetle one. I don't own the bull zord or any of those, but I have the swordfish. Chris, what's your favorite single zord? Oh, let's see. There's a lot of them. <laughs> I know. I don't want anyone to get angry with me, but I, I, I'm sorry, but I have to say, because I don't consider it a mega zord. It's more of a single zord. What would have to be the dragon zord? I that... knew you were going to say that, you son of a <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it was just, and it was just, yeah, it's cool. no, it's awesome, I have that one ordered too. You JDF? <laughs> JDF? Damn it, nostalgia! Uh, my favorite single Zord, even though it can work for all three of these questions, is the Q-Rex. It's the Q-Rex. You've seen the new episode already? N- n- no, no, <laughs> not the <this. laughs> I'm at oh. <laughs> Wrong Q-Rex, never mind. Well, it can eat the that. Dragon Zord for lunch, we know that. <laughs> the original Q-Rex. Um, oh. Even though it, uh, because it, it can combine, it can, you know, it can be its own Megazord. It's got the T-Rex mode. It's so cool. I love it. And it, it can, it runs really weird, but it's, it still manages to be cool. It does um, kind of run like Forrest Gump does a little bit. Like, hey, guys. Um, I just said it ran like Forrest Gump. I didn't say it sounded like <laughs> That's rude, Eric. I'm sorry. That that was <laughs> Anyways. Uh, favorite, uh, favorite Megazord. Let's do that before we do the combination. I'll go with the nostalgia factor. <laughs> the originals. The, the original Megazord? Yeah. Mine, mine would be the Thunder Megazord. From season two. That one's great too. I have four out of the five pieces of that. I really need to track down the last one. Mine has to be the the Mystic Force uh, Megazord. Mystic Force is awesome. The, I, actually, I actually also really like the Wild Force one. I really like. Uh, I, I forget what the actual official name, but in Sentai, it's Maji King. I, for whatever reason, I just I really like that Megazord. I love the way it all combines. I like the different forms that it has. And, I mean, I've got the complete edition Maji King, and it's just so shiny and awesome. And, I don't know, I I really love that design. I am so jealous right now. You have no idea. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's pretty nice. Okay, favorite combination, power-up combination, what have you? The completely combined giant thing of nonsense that was built on my floor at the last couch con that I held that I think was a combination of all the RPM and Samurai Zords. With Zord Builder? <laughs> yes. It was a gigantic mess and amazing, and thank you. Thank you, Toby. Please bring all of your toys again to this year's Couch Con. <laughs> no, it was with Zord Builder and it was giant, but actually... Maybe I, a f- official combination. <laughs> I don't like the over-the-top nonsense that they've come up with in the last couple of years. I'm sorry, the RPM. They, they look ridiculous. You mean like what Overdrive did and had the 10, and then RPM mm-hmm. had the 20? that were all thrown together. And then Samurai's 10 million. They look <laughs> ridiculous. I wonder so, how they even move. <laughs> I have no idea. If we're going with, so if I have to say for a combination, I was going to say one of the Mighty Morphin ones, but then I remember how ridiculous Tor is and I still haven't figured out the point of putting a Zord inside him. I've always wondered that. How does putting more Zords into a Carrier Zord make the Carrier Zord more powerful? I, I don't know. It, it makes sense. Ultra Zord season one. Okay. Mine is, and I'm going to have to pull up a Ranger wiki because I don't know the official combination. Because you get, there's a lot to remember in this 
show. My favorite is when they combine the Delta Max Megazord and SPD with the Omega Max cycle. I like when they combine into that combination. You guys know what I'm talking about. Not a clue. The Delta Max Megazord. That's that's what it was. I don't care about sword fights. That's my dirty little Power Rangers fandom secret. I, I don't. What? I don't care. <laughs> They're just so repetitive after a while. A lot of it is... Cram them, at least in these later seasons, in the last two minutes. Yeah. They're almost pointless. Although I will say, actually, my favorite sword combination is the one that we should probably be getting later in Super Mega Force. Oh, yes. Yes. The ultra legendary... Whatever they're going to call it. Yeah. (laughs) Super Mega. (laughs) Super Mega win. Now, favorite scene and or episode. And you kind of already answered this, Batgirl. My favorite scene and episode is actually Always a Chance. As much Mm. as I love Mirror and Regret, I have so many thoughts about Always a Chance and Adam basically being willing to die at that point. It is my favorite episode. I have lost count of the number of times I have watched it. It's a lot. So favorite, that's my favorite scene or episode, period. Like, nothing in Power Rangers will ever top that. Nice. What about you, Chris? Uh, Heroes Among Us from RPM. I just thought it was a very powerful episode. That's where, you know, Scott is working hard to try to save his dad and little girl, and, and Jem's there too, but Jem gets all the credit and gets a medal and goes over the top with it. Scott gets all emo, runs away. I just thought, as an overall episode, writing-wise, a stunt choreography, things like that, even the music selection, I just thought they totally knocked it out of the park. And it was one of the... Judd Lin's finer uh, episodes, because at that point he was pretty much writing and directing, I believe, RPM. So uh, it was just a great episode all around. I recommend it. If anyone hasn't watched it, go watch it. That was a fabulous episode. One of my favorite episodes of all time would have to be the rescue mission from Lost Galaxy. Yes. Yeah. And the reason I like that so much was it was not a Power Rangers episode. It was a space science fiction aliens type Starship episode. Troopers. Starship Troopers, exactly. There was no no morphed footage. It, it was none of that. It was one of the best. And it was directed by one of my favorite directors in the action genre, which is Steve Wang. You know, he did Guyver, he did Common Rider Dragon Knight, and his effects and creatures are amazing. I just think for a Power Rangers show, it's one of my favorite non Power Rangers episodes. <laughs> I it's <laughs> if if that makes sense. Because I it, why'd it, you love the episode, Eric? Well there's no Power Rangers <laughs> in it. <laughs> <laughs> what? But, no, I think it's it's my favorite just because it broke away from everything that we've seen before or since. And, you know, it, it showed that you could do a different type of story in Power Rangers without relying on all the Power Ranger conventions and tropes. That's why I like it. I like it because it's so different from what we've seen. And I wish Power Rangers would take more chances like that. So that's that's why I like it. Next, favorite actor or actress? David Yost. Why is that? He is the nicest human being on the entire planet. Did either of you go to um, the No Pink Spendix Live with him? No, unfortunately, I, I did not. Okay. No, I, other side I, of the country. I did. I, I, I flew home to New York for it, and he is just, like, the nicest person. And then again, it morphed come two years ago. I have no idea how many hours he ended up signing autographs for, but it was a ton because I threw a room party, and some of my friends were four or five hours late because they were still in line because he had not stopped signing until he got through everyone, and he was being taking all the time to uh, talk to everyone individually and to make them feel like he really appreciated and after everything he went through he is the greatest this one's actually kind of a hard question for me to answer because i haven't had the the luxury of meeting a lot of power ranger actors and things like that Mm -hmm. but i would probably have to say as for right now mine would be jason smith who played casey jungle fury red ranger because i did get to meet him at san diego comic-con last year he was kind of an unannounced just kind of showed up walking around just incredibly nice and awesome guy to talk to amazing accent by the way just wow yeah i'm always amazed that 
when I was watching the interviews and stuff from my legacy box and hearing the New Zealand actors speak in their native accents without their Americanized what they do on Power Rangers, that always just takes me like, whoa, what? I have to do a double take because it's it's so not what I'm used to. But yeah, they've they've got some great accents over there. Mm-hmm. My favorite actor, because I got to meet him and share at a con experience, would have to be Chris uh, Violette from Power Rangers SPD, played Sky. He was, because that I took my brother to that convention, and my brother was 10 at the time. And Chris and YomaCon 2005, that was their first convention. And Chris couldn't have been any nicer. He saw my brother, and my brother really liked him. And he remembered my brother from earlier panels. He was just such a class act. And then getting to talk to him for about 40 minutes at the Ranger Board unofficial room party that we had, he was just so down to earth. Just a fascinating person to talk to. So for me, he he's one of my favorite actors. I've met so many of them and cannot wait to meet more at the next Morphicon, but they are all overall so incredibly nice. Mm-hmm. Jason Font photobombed us um, <laughs> at Morphicon. We're taking a big group photo and then somebody s- suddenly jumps right into the picture and is hugging me and the next person next to us. And we're like, what? And then we realize, oh my God, Jason Font just photobombed us. But <laughs> Dan Southworth is incredibly nice. Um, I cannot wait to to meet him <laughs> he's, he's fabulous um blake foster is wonderful kat sutherland is great like nikia oh, she's a is, sweetheart i have a picture of me and kat and my knitted pink ranger and it's great <laughs> <laughs> i mean they're all over there's so many of them like matt austin is so nice they're all incredibly sweet jessica mm-hmm. what is her last name jessica um, ray yes sweetest she's so wonderful everyone overall it's been so great to meet all of them so basically what we're saying, Ranger Nation, is get yourself to a convention <laughs> and meet some of these guys. If you're not able to make it to Morphicon because you're on the East Coast, Dragon Con's hosting a bunch of Power Rangers again the week after. Ooh. And most of the samurai guys are going to be there this year. This should be very exciting. They, they seem like they're really cool guys. Even though I, I don't like the show, they seem really nice for the most I part. I only got to meet two of them at the last one because there was a line full of giant kids and... I would rather let the giant, the, like the kids, get to meet them and you know hope to see them. But like the two I talked to were incredibly nice. Okay, what is your dream team of six Power Rangers? Let's say you had your own personal once a ranger, and you could bring six Power Rangers as your team to fight for you. Who would you pick? Are we allowed to duplicate colors? Yes. I want forever pink. <laughs> Forever pink. Who who are your six pink rangers? Kimberly, Cassie, Jen, Vita, and Mia. Okay, cool. Actually, no, Corone. Or Forever Yellow, I'd take that also. <laughs> what about you, Chris? Man, this is a loaded question. It's one of those ones that <laughs> I, I didn't have a whole lot of time to prepare before we started I'm, I'm recording. Sure. So <laughs> I was like, oh, I looked as I, I opened up Ranger Wiki earlier to try to figure out some of these things. I'm like, oh, man, this one's going to throw me for a loop. Um, honestly, I wouldn't mind seeing and this is totally fanboyish, but like some sort of forever sixth ranger thing. Bring mm-hmm. back. I'm voting for forever pink. You can vote for forever sixths. I mean, there we go. Well, oh, yeah. I mean, you know, you'd have a, I'd obviously have the zeo gold ranger in there, but I'd love to see in space silver come back. Um, mm-hmm. The magnet defender come back. Titanium ranger, obviously quantum ranger. Yeah. You know, pick a mighty morphin color, whatever one you want, green or white. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Cam, well, the green... bring back Cam. <laughs> There you go. Forget the green. Bring back green ninja storm. So I have Cam. You know, something like that. I, I think it'd just be fun to have a bunch of six rangers that usually did the whole save the days halfway through the season show up randomly, literally show up randomly and, and save the day together. It'd be fun. That would be cool. I'm going to try to go a more traditional route and pick a solid team of colors. For red, I would bring Wes from Time Force. Pink. I would... Wow, I didn't give this a lot of thought either. Um, <laughs> okay, I, I'm just, I'm just going to throw out the top ones. I'm going to say Wes, uh, Doggy Kruger. I will bring back Jen. So, I, I don't know, I'll have Wes and Jen and Doggy Kruger. And, God, this is hard. Eric, I'm trying not to make this a time force <laughs> team, but it's seeming that way. I'd bring back um, Adam as Zeo Green. Woo-hoo! 
And <laughs> actually, Jake, Super Mega Force, and want to throw another girl in there. Tanya. Uh, no, I would actually throw in Tori from Ninja Storm. Hmm. I, I'd bring her back. Hmm. I, I really dug her character. I really liked seeing her in Once a Ranger. That was pretty great. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'd bring her back one more time. I'm sorry, Chris, again. This is another kind of a loaded question, and we might want to wax political or dream our favorite dreams. But what are your hopes for the future of the franchise? Let's say for the next five years to the next anniversary. I would like to see them be more inclusive in general, more ladies, more actors who are not white, more just general diversity. I would like to see Tokyo get adapted where they still have the guys turn into the pink ranger. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> I, I am afraid this is not going to happen. Dino charged to gender swap at least one character, so we have at least one more girl. Mm-hmm. Really, I just want them to... I mean, if I could have my one actual thing, I want a higher episode count. Please stop trying to condense things from 50 episodes into 20. That's what yes. I want. I, I want them to up the episode count. Everything else is secondary. You know what? You cannot condense 50 episodes into 20. It's just... It ends up being what Megaforce was, where we were, as much as I like Megaforce, we get all fight scenes and no character development. If they went Mm -hmm. back and look at what made Mighty Morphin great, it was not, I mean, yeah, the fight scenes are awesome, but we got more unmorphed fight scenes and we actually had character development and character focuses. Now it's like, I can't tell you with the exception of one episode who the episodes are actually supposed to be focusing on because we barely see them unmorphed. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I want. Uh, what What about you, Chris? Um, <laughs> <laughs> less JDF, more filling. <laughs> no, I, I'd like to see them actually try a little bit. And when I say that, it, it literally feels like, especially now that I've been watching the Sentai of the shows they're adapting, it literally feels like they go out, they they find five English speaking actors and an English speaking mentor fill in a bunch of just random people walking around and all they do is literally copy paste a translated script from the Sentai. Mm -hmm. Sometimes down to the word for word part. And that just really bugs me because when you do that, you are following what Sentai did for storylines. And some of those episodes, for example, super mega force, um, the episode where Noah has to do the swordsmanship thing. Yeah. <laughs> and Go Kaiger, that episode was a lot more powerful because the character Joe, his backstory and everything that you would eventually learn about him, like it just it made it a much more powerful episode. But in Super Mega Force, it's out of character for the the character Noah who went from being a nerd to being like the most amazing swordsman slash tech geek slash and that's cool. But that's not the character we were introduced to, you know, in Megaforce Episode 1, and there was no growth. It's like one day he woke up and, ta-da! He's a separate character now. He is not yeah. the same character. Exactly. And it didn't work for Emma either, because the reason it worked in Gokaiger, and I think I said this last time, is because I was the newest member of the team, and she didn't know them as well, so her worry about Joe made sense. Exactly. And <laughs> But just to, to finish the answer up, I, like I said, I, I would like to see them try. I'd like to see them try to be a little more original, Mm-hmm. To try to spend maybe a little bit more money, and if we're going to the next anniversary, maybe try to make it feel like an anniversary. You know, <laughs> a, little, a little. Not to say that Super Mega Force doesn't, but you can see where the shortcuts have been taken, and we shouldn't have to wait to the last episode of an anniversary season as it was billed to us when they were promoting Mega Force before that came out. Before we they're like, have... oh, oh crap, we have to actually get some past actors. Like, oh here. shoot, we should probably <laughs> celebrate the anniversary. I don't know, just just try a little bit. Realize that your audience is growing up. And mm-hmm. as easy as it is, and I know that's a big toy marketing thing is toys. Having worked with that whole industry for a long time, I can tell you that the idea is that when kids hit age nine, it's game over, it's video games, and that's it. So they literally target from four, four or five years old to nine years old, and they figure that have that much of a gap to mm-hmm. capture the audience. That's why now they think Nickelodeon's doing the two-year deal, and Bandai likes that, I think, because it's two years to hopefully hold on to that audience before you lose them, and you have to bring in a whole new audience because of video games or what have you. And yeah. But I would just like to see them try a little bit because Power Rangers has such a unique history and such a rich history. Yeah. It's a shame to see it completely ignored or even written off for whatever it is we're getting now for the, let's save money, we'll just 80% Sentai footage, 20% US footage, or you know English footage. 
ready, set, go. But yeah, that's just me. Yeah, and I agree with all the points that you guys are saying. My big thing for the franchise is I wish it would capture that epic feeling like it did in the quote-unquote Zordon era years, where it felt like one big universe – They were going to different planets. They were expanding the universe. There was all that continuity and stories would continue from season to season. And, you know, I'm not saying keep the mega force power Rangers here for, you know, another two years, but I want more of that interconnectivity. And you're starting to see that a bit more in mega force with these quote unquote tribute episodes. But even those feel hollow to some of the crossovers that we've had in the past. They don't feel as epic because there's not that story behind it anymore. They're not even close as being reinforcements from the future. No, oh no. It's not like that at all. That's what I miss about the current state of Power Rangers. I want that epic feeling to return. I want that sense of wonder to come back. If Saban is going to, they've already taken back the franchise, then capitalize on what you've done before and realize that kids today are pretty smart. If you show them something from a past season, don't be afraid of past references because you're basically just marketing your older seasons and getting them to buy the DVDs and do Netflix. And I just wish they would market it a little better instead of the kind of the lazy marketing that we're getting. You should have to rely on YouTube to promote your show. We're getting marketing. It's on YouTube. Just on YouTube. That's it. Yeah. yeah, That's what it is. It's, it's on YouTube and that's all we're getting. It's social media. Well, not every kid is on social media. I even miss even in the Disney seasons where it's like, we got the next week, next week on Power Rangers SPD. And oh my God, check out, this is going to happen. Whoa, stay tuned. I just miss promos too. Who? what's going to happen next? Oh my gosh, stay tuned. Hey, hey, there's promos. They're just on YouTube. <laughs> right. I'm telling you, that's the future marketing campaign is the Power Force and YouTube. Uh, you okay. sigh because you know it's true. I, I do sigh because it's true. The Power Force is free marketing, is it not? It is. And then you have YouTube, and all they have to do is just throw it out there a little bit, get the Twitter feed going, which they do. There you go. Right there. If I retweet it, you retweet it. Ranger Board retweets it. Henshin Justice retweets it. There you go. Boom. It's hit, like, what, 20,000 people right there? I mean, that, that's all it takes. I just wish it wasn't as lazy as their writing has been. That's what I'm saying. I just wish there was more effort and i know they're not going to do it because they're doing the bare minimum because they're still making their money and why why should they try any harder this is true but i want them to try harder i know they're not going to do it but that's my hope oh, and I, I, I know i'm going to have my hopes crushed probably i mean <laughs> i'd like them to acknowledge that women watch or girls watch the show yeah you know that's never going to happen because they've already flat out said they don't want us pretty much everything you said and i just wanted to say you were talking earlier about the noah episode and how it didn't feel like as epic and and everything i don't know what everyone else thought about the samurai episode but i basically sulked the entire way through it the sentai counterpart is my favorite those are my two favorite episodes of go kaiger because they're the game changer episodes Mm. here's the backstory we got nothing Well, now on a more positive note, we are going to turn to Ranger Nation Answers. We asked, what do you think of Austin St. John's return to the fandom after all these years? First, what do you guys think? I am super excited. I cannot wait to meet him at Are you super mega excited? I am super mega excited. (laughs) I have a purse that's been signed by 30 or 40 Rangers at this point, and he's one of the ones I'm missing. Yeah, the purse itself is worth, well, those signatures that I paid for are worth more than the purse. (laughs) I'm really excited. I know that I was really afraid for a while it was going to be like a Gold Ranger exclusive or something, but apparently I just have to get online an hour before it opens, so I'll probably be online an hour and a half before it opens. (laughs) (laughs) All right. What about you, Chris? What do you think? I think with all the venomous drama that happened in the last week, week and a half, I thought the timing was perfect, Mm -hmm. like just totally perfect. And I think maybe in hindsight, looking back now that it's been a while, that maybe a lot of this positivity is like an overreach because everyone was feeling so overly negative that now this happens and now everyone's feeling overly positive. Not to say that it's not incredibly awesome to have him coming back after four or five years. It is really awesome. I'm really personally excited for it. I think it's just what the fandom needed at that time. 
and that's awesome. We'll see how it plays out and, and what happens <laughs> because, you know, yeah, someone returns, that's cool, but we could look at, you know, there could always be that possibility that we deal with exactly what, with what we're dealing with now, and that would be horrible. I'd still rather have everyone be overly positive than overly negative. Negativity is yeah. super mega draining. There we go. <laughs> but I, I'd rather, you know, have everyone concentrate on, hey, this is really great. An actor who we haven't seen since, was he at Morphicon 1? He was, was at, at one or two. Yeah. He wasn't at two because I was at two. He was um, at the first one. Yeah. Um, who, like, nobody's really seen since. And now I'm crossing my fingers like crazy for Amy Jo Johnson. Please, oh, me too. Please, universe. <laughs> I'm going to have to fly out and sleep in the hallway if that happens, man. I would too, probably. You know what? <laughs> I, I've, already got, I've already got two people rooming in my room. Chris, if you really need a room that bad, there, <laughs> we've got more floor space. <laughs> I, I'll just split the room four ways instead. <laughs> I was hoping you'd want to snuggle, but okay. Or... or <laughs> <laughs> Super mega awkward. Um, <laughs> first, we have Dench Ranger at Cal Dench. Brilliant timing. JDF versus Austin would be fun. I don't think so, but whatever. <laughs> Next, Monkey Grid at Monkey Ranger. I'm glad Austin came back to us in his own time. He's definitely a breath of fresh air considering recent events. Misty Sonby at Incinere said, happy, so, so happy, but upset to see the seemingly reflexive defensiveness of Tommy fans. I love the I, emphasis you put on Tommy right there. Sorry. <laughs> Tommy! <laughs> Ryan Cox at Ryan Cox 20. I think it's great. He was out doing good in the world and be respected by us for that. Who's this guy? Kickback, wrinkle. Oh, it's you, Chris. <laughs> oh, should I say my own? <laughs> yes, say your own. <laughs> so kickback at wrinkle said, a true hero returns. <laughs> Thanks for that, kickback. <laughs> Be sure to check out his podcast at Talkin' Toku. Why do you have to uh, rub it in right now? I mean, <laughs> really. Oh, oh, oh. I'm, having, I'm, we're having, I'm having issues getting the last episode we recorded. Getting the audio, or, so I'm a little, I'm to, to nation now. and check out the taco goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope you have that archive saved. I hope that doesn't disappear entirely. It's saved. Okay, Joey ZDX at Joey ZDX said, "Excited to see him return. Can't wait to meet him at PMC." Power Morphicon. Power Morphicon. RJ Sills Uchibro seventy seven. At Anime Redneck 96. It's great to know there are true actors that want to interact with the fandom. Also, there is such a thing as true heroes. Sean Espinoza at Blue Racer 2010 said, Having him back is awesome. Can't wait to hear what he's been doing. Jeff Moses at Carry You Heroken said, Great and awesome. There's a theme here. Everything's great. <laughs> And awesome. Everyone's and awesome. seen the Lego movie, right? <laughs> Everything is awesome. <laughs> Ken Glenn at the Ken Glenn. So I think it's great. And a breath of fresh air considering current events with JDF. Maybe the spotlight can shift a bit. I hope the spotlight shifts a lot. Um, the spotlight just breaks. <laughs> <laughs> it explodes. Just no more spotlight for anybody. <laughs> Mike Valdez MJ Valdez 84 said, it's great to see the original and true leader back in action. Uh, Ranger board at Ranger board said, (laughs) I'll echo what I said a few days back. ASJ is returning at just the right time. It feels such a breath of fresh air and something positive, happy and sincere. Just what we need. George Hansen Jr. at Silurian Ranger said, I think it's I think ASJ coming back is perfect timing. He's been missed. Jason may not be my favorite Ranger, but Austin St. John is a real hero. At Digi Ranger nineteen ninety four said, I'm glad he's coming back. It'll be great having him back. His timing was good too. There's quite a bit of a theme here. <laughs> I'm waiting for a negative one. I don't know. <laughs> 
Hassan Ahmed at Hassan Ahmed one twenty said, "I think it's great. Can't believe he has lived in my area for a while, and I've never seen him. But it's cool that he's back. So yeah, not a negative reaction on there. Why would it? We're getting more actors who want to meet us, or at least are willing to let us pay for the privilege of meeting them. Right? It's going to be gr- everything is awesome. There we go. <laughs> it's great." <laughs> I just liked his message where the one part where he says, I want to hear your story. I want to hear what you were doing and where you've been. I think that was my favorite part of it. I I, I like that message. I just, his voice is so mesmerizing. It's crazy. It is. (laughs) You're just like, whoa. (laughs) But no, like, yeah, that entire message was just very, and I hate to keep referencing that to someone else, (laughs) but when you compare, that's what you're like. Yeah. Because, for those who don't know, like literally like what was it like maybe two hours before JDF posted up a thing about, you know, you guys are true fans and I'm your true hero. And yeah, that's why we had so many true hero comments in that <laughs> little section right there. Yeah. <laughs> and and so here comes Austin St. John just got done spending time in the Middle East and stuff like that. And to see him not only repeat just how humble he is to be requested by the fans to come back, but to sit there and, and want to hear our stories and shake our hands and take pictures. I don't know. It just it it just sounded really awesome. It it felt so it felt right. Yes. Well, that concludes this episode. I want to thank you guys so much, especially Short Norris, Chris, <laughs> for this like literally ten minutes. And then hopefully next episode everything will be back to normal. But I want to definitely thank you guys for being on here. Anytime. Oh yeah, it's it's always fun. If you know things don't ever work out on my side, I'll just start. You know, you'll be like, "Hi, this is the Ranger Command Power Hour," and then I'll just be here and I'll be like, "At Talking Toku, woo!" <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have our crossover episode it's gonna happen feels like this is a crossover episode <laughs> I've done your, two, right? i have done your podcast more than my own in the last month <laughs> <laughs> that's oh. not a bad thing i enjoy being here i'm, I'm more yes. than happy to help out anytime it's just well i i really hope that you're able to work things out with that audio me too good luck we're sending all the positive podcast vibes your way. <laughs> Hopefully something magical happens overnight, but we'll see. Austin St. John rides in and delivers your audio files. Atop a white horse. Can he have, like, the gold ranger helmet on? Because then, yes. then that, that's it for me. I could die tomorrow completely happy. I, I wouldn't even edit the podcast. Be like, that's it. My life's over now in a good way. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Catch you later. Bye. See ya. Bye. See ya. You've been listening to the Ranger Command Power Hour, only on the Four-Eyed Radio Network. You can catch a new episode every other Saturday. Find us on the Morphing Grid at www.rangercommand.com. Follow us on Twitter at rangercommandph, and like us on Facebook.com. Slash Ranger Command Power Hour. This has been another great presentation of the Four Eyed Radio Network. You can catch more shows at fouredradio.com.